Hey everybody, it's Jessica and this is Second Sunday. I'm doing it a little bit later than I usually do. Usually every second Sunday of the month for the last six or seven years, it has been 11, 11 a.m. And today it's 7 p.m. Central Time because that's the way it's working right now. So I definitely did wanna jump on and give you guys what I always do, a little energy update, a little forecast, a little tips and tricks, some biohacking, some safety nets, some things that we can kind of, kind of grasp onto in these completely changing times. So first and foremost, we made it to December, right? This year feels like it has gone by so fast and yet so slow. So many changes internally, not so much going on out outside as far as like real certainty, real explanations, real understanding. But what that has done for us is it has kind of forced us to get inside and find that certainty and find that direction and find that intuition. And I think that this year, although being extremely difficult to navigate has somehow, you know, like I always teach every negative is a shortcut, you know, unwillingly maybe, but definitely got us into that place of really being able to hear ourselves, listen to ourselves, feel ourselves, and, and really start to kind of make course corrections as far as who and what we thought we were. You know, a lot of times we, we build this life out of what we desire, but what we desire a lot of the time is based on what we are resisting. You know, I don't want to be that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to face that. I don't want to be poor like my family, you know? And so we kind of run away from that initial programming into a reality that we create as adults to only to find that we're faced with exactly the same challenges and a lot of genetics that resemble our own resistance. So if you're new to me, I'm Jessica Elstrom. I am the creator of The Quantum Method. It is an international uh, academy that we are, you know, kind of broadcasting and teaching online. And, and currently we're in 130 countries. And what I do personally is I train practitioners to really um, facilitate The Quantum Method. And The Quantum Method is really defined as being able to use all forms of the toolbox that we have at hand. And that isn't limited to a religion, that isn't, relig that isn't limiting science. It's kind of bringing that bridge together and being able to kind of play in that toolbox of every modality and every possibility because quantum physics is about understanding the field of potential as an observer. And that's really what the second Sunday is about is you know, who we are in our lives versus who we are as the observer of our lives. Who are we when we look through other people's eyes at ourselves? Who are, who are we when we look in the mirror? You know, who are we in our relationships? Who are we with the challenges of, you know, real life, you know, money, bills, um, circumstances, families, people, places, things, jobs, you know, bodies, who are we with all of these things? And really the whole idea of the earth game is about self-realization. It is about really becoming so self-aware that you really have no more questions about why so-and-so is doing what they're doing, why you keep doing what you're doing, because through awareness, you resolve your own limiting beliefs. You resolve the chaos and confusion and the disorder that has, be, that has been created through basically trying to fit into a mold of society and be someone that you're not. Because the second we decide somewhere, somehow, some place that it isn't really safe for us to be our true authentic self, we begin to kind of build these masks. And these masks kind of help navigate us through what we call judgment. And judgment is a safety mechanism that we use to decide, discern whether something is safe for us or it needs to be, um, it, 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 we need to put a, a wall between ourselves. And if you've been training with me the last few years, we work a lot in finding those traumatic experiences and finding those negative belief structures in your judgments. Because what you judge is a key to what you are avoiding 
about some sort of reflection of yourself. Now, I'm not saying that you are what you are judging. I am saying that there is a resistance, a trauma, um, a painful memory, a painful decision that you had to make. Some sort of wall was built between you and what you're judging. And when you move into self-realization, you realize that you are all that is and that you are a creator and you really do create your own reality. And you are creating it through your thoughts, words, and deeds. You are creating it through your resistance. You're creating it through your desire. And there isn't really any separation between the two because the universe only has the word yes all the time, which means yes to your resistance, yes to your pain, yes to your suffering, yes to your love, yes to your abundance depending on where you are focused so if you've been working with me the last few years you've probably been through warrior training and warrior training was a very important workshop that i put together in 2018 to put you into the seat of your ego and look in the mirror who is your ego and how come it only has two personalities victim perpetrator Right. So it's either playing this victim or it's playing this perpetrator. Now, why does it do what it does? How is it created? You know, how is it serving us? How is it protecting us? You know, how do we retrain it? How do we integrate it? You know, these 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 ideas of killing your ego is virtually impossible because it is a fractal of your own consciousness. It is the kind of wounded, you know, inner child critic you know, the one that takes score, the one that counts the failures, the one that finds all the insecurities and keeps them on the front for, you know, the forefront of you making life decisions, you know, whether you're good enough and how we can resolve. Again, you're going to hear that word a lot this last part of this year with me. And then we're going to move into a new term in 2021 that we're going to call reconcile because you know, everything is always perfect. I know it doesn't look that way. I know it doesn't feel that way. I know that, you know, there's loose ends you're tightening up. There's a lot of old past stuff coming back into your field right now. And you're probably going, okay, where's the correlation between this and this future timeline that I'm creating and what is happening on December 21st? And, you know, what is happening with these eclipses and what is happening with these moons and what is happening and what is happening and what is happening? And, what is happening? and Truth be known, you already have all the answers and everything that is in your physical reality right now that's popping up, that's manifesting, that's terrifying you, that's scaring you, that's pissing you off. It's all designed to help you become more self-aware of the things you do want and the things that you don't want so you may resolve and then begin to reconcile your own consciousness. Because as you move into a higher level of consciousness, you begin to be kind of a code writer of the game instead of a player of the game. And as you begin to kind of write your own code, you realize that the so-and-so's rules or whoever got in office, you know, as far as politicians go, it, it means nothing to you because you are creating a reality where, you know, love wins. And I've said that since the beginning. So when it comes back to this idea of love, 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 yeah, 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 we got to think from our heart, we got to feel from our heart, you know, we got to stop thinking in linear terms of, you know, what is, we got to get away from black and white and wrong and right, you know, and evil and, you know, heaven and hell. And we got to move into the center point because truth is, is your, your, darkness is where so many of your possibilities truly exist. And it takes light to illuminate the dark. So for us to be able to see ourselves, the aspects of ourselves that are still bruised and beaten and abused are, we need that light to see those parts of ourselves. But what has usually kept us small or unaware on our journey is the fact that we judge those things about ourselves. We judge other people, you know, who are doing those things. And judgment is a wall that you built to protect yourself. So here we are, 2021, 2020, we have a big pandemic, right? We don't know what's up. We don't know what's down. We don't know what's true. You know, we don't know what stories we're hearing are right, wrong. So conclusion is, is what do I believe? What do you believe? Right. And why do you believe what you believe? And do you question what you believe? And do you make space to allow different ideas? Because if you look at the frequency of an idea, 
it's like, hmm, curiosity. It could be, it could not be. It's like there's a lot of flow. And you look at a belief and it's very solid and very rigid and, and not very much fun because it is holding on in the form of density and it is weighing you down. So the more things you believe, the heavier you get. Now in the game of density, non-density, duality, non-duality, do we want to be flow or do we want to force, right? Do we have love or do we have power? So I've been saying since day one, right? If you're in fear, you're part of the problem, not the solution. You're saying, okay, well, how do I not, you know, how do I not live in fear when this is happening and this is happening and this is happening and this is happening and this is happening, which is exactly why you should be studying the quantum method because nothing is happening, right? Everything is just manifested out of focal points. Right? Where you have focused the long enough? What have, you, what have you been hiding the long enough? What have you, I mean, hi, what have you been hiding the most? What secrets are you keeping? Because it takes a lot of focus to hide a secret. It takes a lot of energy to keep yourself from shining, right? If you are the sun and you are a child of God and you are all these things, it takes a lot more energy and takes a lot more focus for you to hide all of that amazingness about yourself than it is to just stand up. But pain has been our teacher and pain has taught us that it's not safe, that we may not deserve it. You know, who's going to care about what we have to say since there's so many amazing people out there already talking, you know, where I'm going to just get lost because I'm not an expert. Right. And that is really what you're going to be facing within yourselves this year, because anyone who has experience, right can and will become an expert because of that experience. Now, I know that empaths and sensitives, we have a ton of experience, not just through our perspective, but we have also experienced this life through other people's experiences. We have felt what our mom has felt. We have felt what our dad has felt. We have felt what our siblings have felt. And it has kind of spun us out of really being able to trust our own intuition about what we should do in that situation. You know, what do you do when you feel something? You know, who are you when you feel someone else's pain and it starts to become through quantum entanglement your own? You know, so and so's in a bad mood, now you're in a bad mood. And I have talked and trained you all heavily in understanding the very important difference between attachment and connection and the symbology of of the relationship conflict. So as you guys move forward this, this year, you know, I'm not going to get into what the moons are doing or what the eclipse is going to do because it's going to shake your world up. It's going to shake everything loose, right? That's not you. All those belief systems, right? It's almost like when you're pining for gold, right? And you got rocks and you know, all kinds of dirt and you're just going to shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it until there is nothing left but gold. This is what you are metaphorically experiencing right now. That big shake, right? And you're starting to lose rocks that have been your best friend and you're starting to lose family and you're starting to lose people and places and things and ideas and beliefs and ego identification can go, oh shoot, we are losing. You know, higher self identification says we are expanding right? We are shining. You know, we are filling space. We are knowing ourselves more because it's hard to know I'm a piece of gold when I'm buried in a ton of rock that's much heavier than me. So what I teach my students to do is always look for the metaphor of their story. Because when you get into the story, you entangle. When you entangle, you can't see it. It's like, can you see your face without a mirror? No. So as long as you're entangled, you will not be able to see what is in your way. You will not be able to trust your intuition if you are sitting right on your shoulders. You actually have to create space. So going back to that idea of the warrior training that I created in 2018 was to show the perspective of how you can utilize that identification of victim perpetrator within yourself, finding the own narcissistic toxic qualities within yourself, utilizing time and space as your true form of abundance right? And realizing that when you put space between something, you can kind of reconcile your own energy and kind of get your mind right and brainwashing out and say, oh no, I'm not scared like my mom. I'm excited like me, 
and getting you back to that balance point. Because what you're literally facing right now with how everything is lined up for your personal ascension ride and for our collective essential ride and for Earth's essential ascension plan, everything is right on time. So regardless of where you are, you are exactly where you need to be. Now, sometimes it feels like you're taking a step back, but we know that every negative is a shortcut and a step back is important because you forgot to get something back there that you pick up and you expand forward. So what you're noticing is people, places, and things are coming back onto your plate, into your reality. They're randomly texting you. They're calling you, you know, not necessarily actually like putting fires into your world, just putting their energy back into your space. And the interesting thing about that is anyone who's been kind of doing their work, you know, taking responsibility for their own shadow and for their own um, disassociations and their own traumas over the years has a pretty good sense of awareness at this point. Because anytime you take responsibility, you start to kind of close the gap between, you know, the you and you, the you that you want to be and the you that you believe you are. And then that energy in between that you fill people, places and things with so that you don't have to feel that void. Right. In the I am training, I taught you all about addiction and we dove into each frequency of each chakra and the different responsibilities that you have within each Remember, responsibility is the ability to respond and what capabilities you have in your own genetics and what capabilities you have as a multidimensional being and what possibilities exist for you when you're not constantly sitting in a problem, when you're con not constantly in judgment, when you're not constantly in fear. What are the possibilities? They're unlimited. When we take this step forward, right, after that take step back, we're realizing that even though we're stepping back, I really want you to kind of like feel into this for a minute, when you feel like you're taking that step back right now, realize who you are now that's taking that step. It's different. Who you were a year ago is not who you are now. You have kind of grown up vibrationally. You're never going to lose that inner child, but you are growing up vibrationally, which means that you are not in such resistance of your own creations. You're more in observance. You're more in wondering. You're more in curiosity. You're more in understanding. And that is higher frequency. And the higher frequency you get, the more light you have access to. What is the definition of light? Information. Which means now you are getting into alignment with true solutions, with true understanding, with true self. Because you've never been your ego. You've never just been your inner child. You've never just been your higher self. You are the me, myself, and I component of yourself. And you needed those three aspects of yourself to navigate the earth plane through density until you moved into a state of self-realization where you could kind of put yourself back together. You can bring ego back into balance. It can stop being the warden, right? The party pooper, the critic, right? The scorekeeper, the judger, the, you know, jealous guy, whatever it is that you could define your ego will be resolved and it will begin to become more conscious as the healing process unfolds. Now, the healing process on, only unfolds when you begin to ask yourself the hard questions. You know, why do I do the things that I do? Why do I attract the things that I attract? Even though I understand law of attraction and I understand all of these things, you know, why are my relationships not flowing why do not trust people? You know, why do I not feel safe with my government? Right? Well, here we are, 2020. If you made it through the vision quest with me this year, congratulations. That was just the beginning of what we've got coming this year. Now, the vision quest was all about really letting go of false securities and diving down deep into ourselves to get to know the real you, not the you that was created out of your family dynamic the survivor you, the strong you, right? The loving you, the rescuing you, the intuitive you, the psychic you, right? None of those, but the real you, the universe that exists within all those personality identifications that you have technically used to build a life in a big giant jail cell. 
So really, you're none of those things exclusively. You are all of those things metaphorically. And when we move into this idea of self-realization, we see that we're going to be using time and space very differently in the future. As you're probably noticing now, things are still managing to get done, yet you're doing a lot more nothing, right? You're more creative. You're more intuitive. You're playing more. Things are resolving themselves, right? Doesn't mean that there's not conflict that's coming back and things for you to reconcile and resolve, but your level of awareness is increasing, right? We can thank earth. We can thank the heavens. We can thank you. We can thank everyone who has asked and it was given for this new level of awareness that sits with the threshold of our heart. Now, I've always taught you guys that this is not telepathic. This, your heart field, that literally can reach every being in the cosmos, which is a fraction of fractal of you, can communicate, but only through the heart. You've noticed the biggest conflicts that you've had in relationships to date has been that ego separation, that judgment, that resentment, right? That humiliation, that shame, that guilt, that fear, that misunderstanding, that rejection, that abandonment. Those are all big, chunky frequencies that separate us from love. Now, in the beginning, we kind of needed that to navigate our way out of those religious places and the family dynamics and certain environments. But as we have kind of used pain as our teacher and we started to learn how to use it for potential, we really have learned a lot about ourselves. And so where we are now at the threshold of moving into this energy of what they're calling the big solar flash from December 21st, which most of you won't even notice physically, maybe emotionally you may, maybe not, maybe you will physically, depending on where you are really planted within yourself, you know, how grounded you are with who and what you're feeling. Now, for me, none of those things matter what matters is the stage and the stage is your physical reality. So imagine that you're an actor, right? And behind the scenes, they say, okay, on December 21st, we're going to turn this light on. You're an actor on the stage. You don't care. You just know that that's going to happen. And that's going to cue you into a new path right? It's going to eliminate old timelines. It's going to clear up a bunch of karmic energy and it's going to set you on a new path based on what you believe about you. So what I have done is I've created this new workshop called the master of love workshop because love is one of the greatest trigger words in the human body biologically. It's just like hearing the word God it's just like hearing the word no. Your body has a physical, maybe not experience on the outside because we're so numb and jaded, but physically in the nervous system, there's a little shaking going on when you hear this word love. Because most of us, I would say probably 99.9% .9 of us, were raised with the idea that love is pain, right? Love is Love is about, you know, self selflessness. Love is about taking care of others. Love is about, you know, um, giving up some part of yourself to be what someone who says they love you desires you to be. You know, letting go of certain aspects of yourself to fit into someone's puzzle. Okay. This is all the construct of kind of that matrix, third dimensional idea of love. So anytime we have an association in the body, right? We hear the word love. And we're like, hmm, feel nothing. Your body's going, oh, love, right? I don't want that. Why do you think that you're attracted to things that you're not, that are not good for you? You know, because there is a belief system inside that what you love is going to hurt you anyways, right? So look at your last relationship that went in the tank right? Call it a narcissist, call it an empath, whatever you want to call it. It ended up being extremely painful. Now, every negative is a shortcut in this game of duality. So all pain, 
really pushes us into awareness, right? Well, fine. You're not going to love me. I'm going to love myself, right? We use that beautiful childlike revenge energy to move up the frequency scale and we bump into self-love, you know, trying to kind of get back at, we find success by, you know, leaving family. We find money by saying, I'm never going to be like my family. And we, we, we become that which we desire. Although, isn't it interesting that a lot of you have manifested a, a ton of your childhood dreams at this point? And you're probably sitting there going, am I happy yet? Is this it? Is this worth it? Like, what, what am I supposed to feel here? Like, I've got the money, I've got the time, I've got the guy, I've got the girl, I've got the, mm, this still doesn't feel. I'm still not feeling, I'm still not feeling like I thought I was supposed to be feeling at this point. Because the idea of who you are acting as may not be who you truly are yet. Now, I found this hugely and, and every time i do a workshop you guys it's never like okay i channeled this and i wrote it out and here you go hope it works for someone no i am always on the front line i'm always diving into trouble i'm always you know hmm what's going on over here and and really i don't have fear of getting it wrong i don't have fear of failure i don't have fear of looking stupid so I'm really quick to dive into research and the best research on the planet is relationships because whatever you're avoiding in the cracks and crevices of your vibration of your consciousness will be reflected in your intimate relationships. Remember, and to me, I see they will be in your intimate relationships. They will be in your associative relationships. They will be in your relationships with time and space, things, people, places, events. And you'll see that shadow stuff or those fractals of your unhealed parts kind of popping up in those people, places, and things, but we're experts at pushing them down. All right, go away. Go wait. You know, we don't need you. We're just gonna make more money. We're just gonna be stronger. We're just going to be more fit. We're just going to leave that relationship and you know work on my reflection, work on law of attraction so that I can meet my soulmate. Now, from experience, doesn't work. Tried. Why I call myself a biohacker? Because it doesn't work. Because law of attraction is listening to all aspects of me, even the parts I hide. Okay, so. One of the biggest shadows that I found personally, and I'm you know saying this publicly all over the world here, and even on YouTube, is one of the biggest shadows that I found in 2020 about myself is the day that I realized that my point of attraction, like what I was attracted to, what I was drawing towards me, what was coming into my reality, was not what I wanted in a relationship. Now I'm talking about kind of that, that partnership soulmate. I'm not talking about business partners. I'm not talking about family, kids and moms and dads, like all that's, all that's good. But that, that person, you know, that person that doesn't complete you, but compliments you so that your soul can really expand, right? You can be truly authentic. You can be truly present. What I noticed is that I was attracting people that were reflecting back to me my really dominant strong personality because over the years as a single mom and building companies and making all the kind of mistakes and you know doing things wrong and doing things right and you know i have become kind of that alpha you know boss lady energy over the years and and I really kind of pride myself on that. I was like, I'm a strong woman, you know, like I can do anything I want to do. I can pay for what I want to pay for. I can call the shots. I can buy what cars I want. I can buy a house. I can buy this. I can buy that. And I felt very proud of that strength. Now, ask yourself, what is your greatest personality trait? Ask yourself. If someone would have asked me six months ago, I would have said, I'm strong, right? And I am. I have become strong from pain, right? From heartbreak, from loss, 
from being alone, right? From being in dark nights all by myself, but being in the public eye for the last, you know, 10 years and doing it all on display. I really felt that was my best quality. Now, when I kind of sat with my inner child, which we'll be doing a lot of in this new workshop, I realized that yes, I'm that strong. And then, you know, the, the people that I would attract into my life appeared an equal match to me until the masks started to wear off. And I realized that I was attracting very submissive, right? Very not weak, but not driven, not super excited about, you know, building reality. They were more of us like, you know, really amazing people, but they weren't builders. They weren't creators. They weren't, they were very submissive because they was like, well, Jess is going to do it for us. Like we're good. I'm like, Whoa, hold on. That's just going to, that's going to force me more into strength. Okay. And I realized that that's what I was a match to. Now let's look at this. If you're really following me here, if I am strong, then through the understanding of balance and harmony on the planet, I am going to find my counterpoint. I may be attracted to my opposite frequency to balance myself out. So too weak, you're gonna you're going to manifest someone very strong. If you're too strong, you're gonna manifest someone kind of weaker that's gonna try to help balance that level of awareness and consciousness out so that you can basically become like aware of this situation because too high, too low, it's all chaos, right? Confusion, belief systems. Yes, people who are very weak don't know they're weak. People who are very strong don't really know they're strong until they have to be strong, right? Until the weakness shows up, until the victim energy shows up, until the lack energy shows up. So what I noticed is that you know, I sat and thought, okay, I am a pretty, pretty badass manifester. I get it. So there has to be something inside of me that is showing me that I am not balanced here because the, the, the people that I was attracting in my world were beautiful, amazing 5D people, but they weren't, they weren't accessible to my balance point, right? I was not able to grow or expand. I had to kind of step into the big girl panty roll and like take care of everything. And I've been doing that for a really long time. And I found resentment in that. Resentment is linked to separation of self, denial of self, right? I have to give myself away to help you. I got to take food out of my, you know, refrigerator to give to you, blah, blah, blah. It becomes resentful. Now, this happens with a lot of women, I noticed, especially in this new paradigm, because it's kind of like we kind of dove into our masculine role and then was like, I'll just do it all myself. And then we looked at the men and we're like, oh, I resent you. But it's not that's that's a metaphor because it's not truly happening, but it has happened. Right? It's a metaphor of that divine masculine needing to go into their emotional space and reconcile their submissive parts, divine feminine, reaching that masculine height of. I really can do it all. I really can create. I really can thrive. I really can live. And then all of us finding our balance point, which we'll be working on very extensively in 2021 as we reconcile the relationship of our inner child. Okay. So what I realized when I sat with my inner child, which is why I'm telling you this story, to just be completely transparent is, yeah, I'm really strong. I've got four kids. They're all amazing people. You know, I take pride that, you know, I'm working on myself every single day and building this amazing reality and building a life for others and training other practitioners. But do I really want to be this strong all the time? Like, do I really want to have to hold it together every day? You know, because when I asked my inner child how she felt, she was like, you know, sometimes it'd be nice to like be able to feel safe and also be submissive, be able to learn from someone else, let someone else take the reins. You know, and then there's all those shadows of receiving and being weak and being vulnerable. And, you know, it's like on the on the other side of that, it's like, <gasps> right? So it was a great place for me to kind of process like, yeah, I'm super strong. 
and I'll write it all over the place. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to attract someone who needs strength. I'm going to attract someone who is submissive because that's secretly what I would like to be like, like attracts like. So I was like, oh my gosh, Eureka. So I'm going back to the drawing board and working on my new workshop, Master of Love, relationships, how we relate to energy, how we relate to vibration, how sexual attraction works. You know, who is this inner child in choosing your partnership? You know, who's inner child in your bank account? Do you have any idea of what your inner child is capable of? Probably not as much as you are aware of in certain areas, not all of you, but some of you, because the warden, the ego, the protector is always kind of hel helicopter parenting that inner child and really sabotaging anything before it can really get started. Lack of motivation, procrastination, desires gone. These are all fear personalities that the ego identification uses to kind of disallow the inner child to express its true nature, which is unity, expression, adventure, ecstasy, excitement, right? Newness, desire, all these things. So when we dive into our relationships, only then are we really going to truly know who we are underneath the story that we've been playing out and being pretty proud of. You know, it's like I know a lot of practitioners that I've worked with over the last couple of years. They do psychic readings. You know, they do energy work. They do crystal healing. They do Reiki. They, you know, they're amazing. And when we dive into their relationship conflict, they got major beef with the idea of God. Right. You know, Sky Daddy, like Sugar Daddy, like they got a they got a beef with daddy. So usually those practitioners are not flowing in the cash. And they don't realize is that their their anger or their resentment or their feeling of abandonment of whatever you want to call God, even though they're truly connected universally through the cosmos using all of their great intuitive you know toolbox, can still be turned off from that relationship, you know, and really find out where that occurred and how to kind of move through that. So in this kind of personal workshop that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be teaching two new forms of quantum healing. One is a childhood surrogacy program. And another one is what I call an emotional two point, because everything, if you understand quantum physics, everything is connected by two points in order for it to be real, or at least witnessed as real. Right. So something has to be vibrating and then it has to have a spectrum, another point in order to form a line, form reality. So you change one aspect, it all dissolves, moves back into potential. And now you're not stuck on that timeline. You can shift to the par parallel reality of your choice. OK, so understanding that the inner child is kind of if I was going to use a metaphor here is the bridge between your higher self and your lower self and your inner child can speak all of the language of the lower self and it can speak all of the language of the higher self and it can translate it can feel the feelings of pure imagination which means having an experience kind of viscerally and virtually without having it physically happen but it can also experience things in the physical realm this idea of your inner child consciousness okay now most of our inner children have been thoroughly abused thanks to our collective thanks to you know the planet that we decided to jump into right now right and so we are working our way out of that by self-parenting reconciling and healing and becoming aware of who that child is as the creator within. Because if you look at vibration, ego, uh, the, the magnetism of the physical realm will help the inner child manifest form out of energy. Higher self is the one who builds all the potential, kind of beckons you forth into your highest perspective right? Gives you aspect to all that is so that you could decide, discern and choose, you know, like the metaphor I used in class one day is if, you know, the higher self is like the great big mall, every store you could ever imagine, houses, cars, people, places, everything exists in this mall, the inner child sitting in the middle, 
and ego's holding the credit card, right? That is the relationship that you are having with yourself. Now, if you're, if your ego is swiping that card and that inner child is living its best experience, then you're probably really high in the awareness game. Okay. If you're standing at the forefront of endless possibilities and you can't get your warden to give you the credit card, that relationship, that relationship is traumatized. Now, the relationship that we're having with ourselves creates all the relationships that we have outside of us. Yep. Even your kids, even your parents, you're saying, well, I didn't create that. You did. You are having a grand hallucination. And when you stop breathing, it's over. But for right now, as you're hallucinating, you are building this dream out of memories right? Circumstances, events that created belief systems that continue to reinforce themselves, right? What creates a belief system? Practicing it over and over and over again, a thought, a feeling, a, a belief until it becomes subconscious. And so you no longer not to think about it anymore. It just vibrates. Here's how you know. You feel like you're looking pretty good that day. You're feeling confident, feel on point. Right, you got your stuff together, you walk into a room, all of a sudden someone says something to you, triggers you, you don't feel so good anymore, right? You don't feel so on point, you don't feel larger than life, you don't feel like you can do it, you actually feel pretty small and like you'd like to leave and your tummy hurts, okay? And you don't know what just happened. So those are the things that you're noticing that you're bumping up against right now. You know, it's like those buzz kills and those, you know, those walls and those stuck points and those limits. Although you are so different because you didn't walk in that room as, you know, a, a, a child. You walked into that room with your higher self with you. Right. And so your higher self's like, yeah, well, we're much too aware to like actually have this really affect us. But it is affecting the body. It is affecting our state of being. It is affecting our moods. You know, it's kind of a, it's affecting our self-esteem right now. So let's take a look at that. You know, a year ago, it would have just affected you. Now, it's having more of that response versus reaction. You're taking a lot of the time to kind of sit with what is happening and realize that it isn't happening to you. It's happening through you, for you, to reflect through projection. Okay? So in this workshop that we're going to be doing, we're going to be, the entire workshop has been written by the inner child. So the language, the modalities of quantum healing that we're going to be learning are, is all based in that, that part of you that can go all the way into the dark and all the way into the light without losing its vibe, right? Because it knows the dark. It knows the light. It works with both aspects, brings us into balance, right? You know, as I remembered who I was as a little girl, you know, I asked myself, you know, what do I want to be when I grow up? I wanted to be a teacher, which I am, but I also wanted to be a loving wife, you know, have the beautiful picket fence and make beautiful meals and travel and, you know, have beautiful memories and have lots of family pictures everywhere and have lots of kiddos and grandbabies and, and just love, you know, nothing special, just, the, you know, my, that, that kind of human dream. You know, two divorces later, four kids scratching my head and like, this is hard, right? Like, yeah, I've been able to do this by myself. But if I asked my little girl, did she want to build an empire by herself? You know, I can't even get my kids to work with me yet in my company. Like, is this really what I want? Or is this what I believe? Do I believe that I, if I want it done right, I have to do it myself? Do I believe that I'm the only one who can do this? Or do I believe that, you know, everybody else is too wounded or whatever? And I had to find those belief systems because if I'm making this all up, why would I want to make that story up? Why would I want to make up that reality? So back to the drawing line, back to research, back to quantum hypnosis, asking myself questions, you know, what it is about this person that attracted me and what about this person now repels me. Very important. Hey, any of you guys who have ever been like online dating, here's a perfect scenario. 
right? So like we kind of get our, you know, sexy back and we're ready to like put ourselves out there. And we're like, I could do some swiping, right? Get on some dating apps. And all of a sudden, you know, thousands of people, you're swiping. All of a sudden you hit a really attractive person. Like, I mean, you're just like, oh, whoa, like can't, took your breath away. And immediately you feel insecure, right? You're going, oh, and now because you don't feel good about yourself, ego says, well, he's probably this or he's probably that or he's probably a womanizer, right? So you make up a story, you build meaning to how you felt and you keep swiping. Okay, so then you get to someone who is hideous, at least considered to the ego, and you're like, oh my gosh, right? And all of a sudden now you are in judgment of someone you feel is below you, and all you feel superior. You see the two forms of judgment there. Now, we do this a lot more than just online dating. We're doing this every day. We're doing this at our job. We're doing this in our families. We're doing this with our kids. Because what pokes your insecurity that drops you down, we make an excuse about it and we push it under the rug. We don't deal with, well, why do I not think I'm good enough for like this super gorgeous person? You know, we don't question that. Maybe we do now as this awareness has shifted. But we usually kind of go, eh, and then we move on to the next one. So then we just want to find someone who's in the middle. Like, I just want to find someone in the middle who's like not so good looking that they're always looking in the mirror, going to the gym, or you know who knows it, or I have to worry about them cheating or whatever story that is in third dimension land, or someone who's like you know got nothing going on. I'm not going to be anywhere attracted to that, or someone safe, right? Because when we settle, jobs, relationships, houses, careers, conversations the mirror, we are basically saying that I am not free to be extraordinary, that I am not free to be my truest loving self because this is where I'm safe, right? Don't want someone too good, don't want someone too bad, put them in the middle because ultimately when I look at this person who's not attractive, I feel superior, I feel arrogant, I like that. When I feel see someone who's doing better than me or better looking than me, I don't feel so good. So I'm going to find something in the middle and I'm going to hold on to that. And because there's resistance, there's low self-esteem, there's lack of self-love, there's lack of personal engagement as far as what traumas are, are causing us to choose, choose this central point, we attract it and then we find everything that we are hiding from ourselves in this person or this job or this project because it's not just people you're having relationships with everything in your reality who you are with money who you are with time who you are with your intimate relationships who are you with your family relationships who are you with your environmental relationships who you are with your own body so until we find the part of us that is rejecting ourselves when we see something too good and being arrogant about something that we see is too bad we have not reconciled ourselves and we will not be able to really be able to attract or even be attracted to what is our true heart's desire. Because you're an infinite being with unlimited potential who actually came to be quite extraordinary. But when it's time to be extraordinary, you know, that, that kind of warden mindset, like starts playing score of all the times that we've like failed and like, you know, we're not a spring chicken anymore, you know, two failed marriages and blah, 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 blah. blah. And then we're like, mm, just find somebody in the middle and, you know, call it good. Right. So what you're actually setting, saying metaphorically to the universe is I'm going to be someone in the middle. I'm not going to be too good. I'm not going to be too bad. I'm going to be too hot. I'm not going to be too ugly. I'm just going to be right here where my comfort zone is, right? I'm not going to put myself out there because I might get hurt, I might get humiliated, I might get embarrassed, I might get dumped, I might get abandoned, I might get rejected, right? And I'm not going to go there because I'm going to end up abandoning and rejecting that person. So I'm going to be the person in the middle. And this is what you're finding right now in the smack dad of December, is that you have created a reality where you're in the middle 
of your own hopes and dreams, of your own story. Like I'm in the middle, not quite where I want to be, but I'm getting there. So it's such amazing energy. I mean, I know that it's like, oh God, oh, but really when you kind of come down to what you came for, you did not come to get lost in the cosmic expansion of the ascension. You came to ride the waves as a surfer, utilize the photonic energy that was building in the, you know, the keyholes and the, the grid points of earth and utilize that as your ability to become a surfer. So as you begin to surf this energy, you become very extraordinary. And you stop looking at everyone else do it, right? And the cool part about it is when you do it, you don't even think you're that great because I don't, I don't know, I can just do it. How many times has someone said to you, how do you do what you do? Oh my God, you're so good at that. Like, you're so intuitive. You're so like, you just make it look so effortless. I, I know every single person that is listening to me right now has had this experience where people are just so drawn to you that they can't understand how it just seems so effortless. Because it is who you are. And that part of you needs to kind of bleed into your human parts. You know, your your aspects of, you know, even, even someone in my position who's teaching all over the world as a mentor is like surfing the web when it comes to understanding cosmic energy and quantum theory and manifestation. And then, you know, getting caught in a riptide, you know, on a dating app six months ago, you know? So it's like, you find that place where you are not sovereign. You find that place where it is kind of you making choices that you may not think are out of fear or out of failure or out of misery, but you're making choices unconsciously that are building walls that feel like other people are placing in front of you because there isn't anyone there. Law of reflection states, that what I believe that I am, I will create in people, places, and things. So very excited because we are just sitting at that mall of em endless possibilities. We are in good health. We are working towards, you know, major freedom and abundance. And the only thing that we have to do is kind of course correct this relationship. And the really amazing thing is you don't have to correct any relationship outside of you. You won't be doing any of that with me. You will be reconciling, resolving, right? Amending, repairing, allowing, accepting, understanding the relationship between the unconscious part of you and the super conscious part of you so that you can learn a new form of communication, which is the number one cause of any disconnection in a relationship, communication. So when communication isn't good here, it for sure won't be good there. If I am avoiding what my ego is saying about me, I'm probably gonna project someone who is my ego in human form and they're going to say to me what I don't wanna hear from myself. So we look to our reality, we go in, we reconcile, we're moving into this energy where you are going to literally get beautiful waves to surf, now, some of you are going to get crushed because that's what you need to experience to say, I'm done getting crushed. I'm done. I'm done getting blindsided. I'm done getting the wind knocked out of me. I'm done being confused. So I got to pay attention when those waves are coming. And it doesn't mean that you need to study the Schumann resonance all day long to determine what energies are coming in because you are the universe ascending. So how do you feel? Human residents, how do I feel today? I feel tired, I feel lethargic, I feel weak, I feel angry, I feel sad. Great, that's where we are. And like I said in class the other day, this idea of this, this kind of solar flash idea or this, this cosmic expansion that's happening on the 21st of December is your rebirthing. Now, if you've ever been a pregnant woman, 
you know that one day you're angry, the next day you're sad, the next day you're sleepy, the next day you want to kill people, the next day you want to eat something and you crazy, the next day you want to sleep all day, the next day you're in severe pain. And isn't it interesting how we really don't judge that any of that is bad because it's all part of pregnancy. But now, oh my gosh, I've studied quantum theory for 20 years and I just had a bad day. What's wrong with me? I'm angry. What's wrong with me? I'm sad today. What's wrong with me? I didn't feel like doing my podcast today. What's wrong with me? You're pregnant with yourself. You're birthing in this new timeline, December 21st, right? Jesus, it's your birthday, right? You, the second coming, the Christ consciousness that is being rebirthed out of your suffering, that is being rebirthed out of your own pain, that is being birthed out of you being on the cross, hypothetically, will be coming online. And you will be learning to work with that level of awareness, but you are going through growing pains, birthing pains, and it is all associated with pressurizing the diamond within you. And you are also human, so you are spectrum emotion, which should be allowed, which means angry, don't put meaning to it unless it's chronic, right? I've been angry for a few days. Let me see what I'm entangled with that's making me hide from grief, okay? I've been crying a lot lately, good. Maybe I'm just becoming more conscious of why I've always been sad and pretending to be strong, right? I feel very tired, good. Maybe on a cellular level, you're building a new body. I've been doing a ton of work. Good. Let's look at the positive aspects of everything that's happening because the pandemic and blah, 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 blah. It's a blessing in disguise to bring us to the higher points of awareness so that we may step into the role of creator because we thought we were creating before, but we are creating out of avoidance. We are creating out of addiction. We've been creating out of suffering, trying to get away from all of those things. If you look at your motivating factors of why you do the things you do, 90% of the times why you do what you do is to get away from another feeling. I got to work hard because I don't want to not pay my mortgage because that feeling, no, so I'm going to work, right? I'm going to lose weight because I don't want to feel fat. I'm going to eat work perfect because I don't want to get sick. So when we use action, to run from pain, we are on a hamster wheel. So, wait, I just got in the perfect shape of my life and then this happened. Like, what comes around goes around. Now, we are in the time space continuum right now of revisiting all of your old selves. That's why those people are coming out of the woodworks and those ideas are coming out of the woodworks and those random people from your past are coming out on your messenger and like, why is this person, you know, reaching out to me is because that aspect of you is a place you've been avoiding. You've been avoiding the anger that's associated with that story, not that person. Doesn't mean to go date that person. It means what about that person? How does that person make my inner child feel? Right? So you're going to do some work on that. And whether you do my workshop with me or you do another workshop or wherever else you are, you know, in this, this place, you're experiencing this. We're all in this together. Not one of us is not expanding through this level of awareness right now, regardless of what dimension you're channeling. We are all growing into higher self in human form. We are moving from an ego, carbon, very heavy, dense, critical, separated expression of a human form into an enlightened state of being where we are free to be free. We are free to be abundant. We are connected to the universe and streaming our own Wi-Fi instead of using someone else's hotspot to suck their energy off because you can't make it yourself. You can't pay your bills yourself, right? That's a belief system. The, your money never has come from your paycheck. It has come from your belief systems. Because when you start to tap in, connect your own Wi-Fi, heart field out, what you seek is seeking you. I seek this. Someone else says, well, I seek to give you this because I love you. So we're going to dive into this big frequency of love 
as what we are instead of what we want. Because if we believe anywhere in our body that love is pain, we will secretly be in resistance of it. And then we will be attracted to its opposite. And then it will turn into a lesson three months later, six months later, 20 years later, depending on if you marry him or not, have a couple kids, right? Get locked into a contract. So we're moving out of this idea of, of attachment and codependency. We're moving into this idea of acceptance, expansion, vulnerability, right? Vulnerability, that's scary. Not really when you're looking at it the perspective of your higher self. It's very scary when you look at it from the idea of lower self. Matter of fact, it came up in one of our live Q and A's the other day. You know, I'm always talking about vulnerability, vulnerability. And the student just said, I just read the definition of vulnerability. And it's like, that don't feel good to me. You know, susceptible to being taken over and being hurt. Like, I don't want any part of that. But the true form of strength is hidden in vulnerability because the true spiritual kind of definition or metaphysical definition of vulnerability is to be open. If you're not open, you're not going to get what you want. If you're closed, you're going to get someone else who's closed because you're closed. Like attracts like. But those aren't things you see on the surface from the picture that they have on their profile. That's not what you see on your first date. That's what you see three months later. That's what you see once you get into the job. That's what you see once you get into, you know, your meditation space. That's what you see about yourself. So we're just going to get into a little bit deeper level of ourselves. But we're going to be accessing this particular work through the inner child's perspective because there is no judgment. There is no racism. There is no time. There is no limits. There is only possibilities. And we can break up these really solid stories that you keep telling and have your inner child tell the same story. And it looks completely, feels completely different. So two modalities we're going to be learning in this workshop. It's available on my website, jessicaalstrom.com. No obligation, just going to take you through it based in what I'm going through. So I have just finished my own workshop, which I always do or take my own workshops. And then the after effect is that I have attracted a very, very, very dominant partner who is extremely loving and safe and allowing and letting me teach myself how to be submissive. You know, he told me the other day, he said, you know, just if you never want to work again, like you don't have to like, we're doing pretty good. Like you really don't have to do anything ever again if you don't want to. You know, I've had, probably been waiting to hear that since I was a little child, since, you know, I've been sitting in poverty most of my life. I was, it was very shocking to ha actually have someone tell you that and then go, how do I feel about that? Like who, like what I'm doing, I don't do for money. What I'm doing, I don't do for anything other than I have to do it. Like it's just a call. It's a mission. It's effortless. So I said, yeah, there might be certain aspects of my job that I may not want to do anymore. And I will really take that into consideration, but I will never give up this idea of who I get to be. Just the idea of being more free in that. Well, I've never been able to attract that before because what I was attracting before was someone who was very drawn to my success and my ability to create. And they wanted to learn from that, which is great. That's my students all over the world, but it's not necessarily what you want in a, a, a master like partnership experience. You want an equal player who is, is very expressive and dominant in the areas you choose to be submissive and where you want to be dominant, they choose to be submissive. That is a partnership. A relationship is where most of the time, uh, you know, your your baggage is relating to each other and it's like bumping up against each other. And I think that we are becoming so self-aware as a collective that we're realizing that we don't have to live this way anymore, that we don't have to follow the rules and obligations of standard, you know, operating basis, status quo, you know, what our grandparents did. We can make our own rules when it comes to our heart's desires and giving ourselves permission for that. So December is an amazing space for all of us, regardless of what you're going through right now, whatever, whatever storyline you're manifesting right now, I want you to kind of dig into it and stop looking at so much about, you know, what it is and break it up as how it feels because there's a lot of encrypted messaging in how it feels. And the less that we try to not feel it, 
the more we're going to build a replica of that experience somewhere else because eventually higher self is going to keep you know standing us up and saying it's time to walk standing us up and saying it's time to walk and eventually when you get to a place where your self-awareness is at a peak you will walk through that fire and realize that it was just a gust of wind right and then you will go like oh this is awesome so it's all about the name of the game Yes, self-love, self-awareness, self-realization, but is master of life. It's like mastering your life and not settling for a life where you're constantly in the middle, right? And having your heart's desire beckon and call you and make you feel so, you know, weak with need and, and watching other people live out their dreams. And, and I know that's excruciating. That's what I would consider hell on earth. And if heaven and hell is a state of the mind, we want to get out of both of those and we return to the heart where what I desire is also desiring me. If I can get out of here and I can get into here, but really this is the realm of inner child because you know, you heard a child talk, can we just all get along? Can't you just love daddy? Can't mommy just love mommy and daddy? And you know, I love both of you and you know, I don't want to choose sides and I, I don't want to do this anymore. And, and that's really where we're going to be turning to. So it's exciting times, even though it feels kind of like a shit show. I get it. But the less that you take ownership of your story and the more you move into the role of observer, the easier this will get because it's where your training step. You're putting time and space into your story, which means you begin to unentangle with it. you be able to see it from different perspective than you know this person hurting you or this thing happening to you is it it breaks up that kind of hormonal tangible like like very intoxicating realism of reality and it brings you out so that you can see yourself through your eyes of your higher self instead of the eyes of everyone looking at you through your inner you know lower self judging you and then that's where a lot of your freedom is going to be. So regardless of what you're going through, you know, I don't, I, I say this to everyone, you know, I don't care if you have no options right now, no money, no health, no help, no support, nothing. If you can hear my voice, you have you. And that is what you need, only you, to create from outside of you the people, places, and things that you will co-create with. So if it feels like you have nothing right now, realize you have everything, but you've just given your power away to other people. So you give the power back to yourself. You use your imagination. I imagine my nation. I am magician. And you, from an observer's perspective, move onto the bridge and reconcile some of this these belief systems that are like glue that are kind of holding you in place and get in to that inner child energy and remember who and what you were before you had to be strong before you had to be wealthy before you had to be a know-it-all before you had to be everybody's savior before you had to be a healer before you had to be this who'd you want to be really you're in that rebirthing state allow yourselves to just play in the field of potential especially when things get scary because what it does is it challenges your story i'm going to turn that into a game i'm going to play with that i'm going to play with this idea i know i feel very intoxicated as if this is real but i'm going to take a step back whether you have a formula for doing that or you make up something or you find one you know for me it's just saying this is a dream like this isn't real like how do i really feel about this like would i choose this would i go see this movie then why do i keep interacting with it right because what you appreciate appreciates and what you give your attention to creates your reality bad or good there's only one answer in the yet in the universe and it's yes so what we are hiding from ourselves is being basically it's being ripped out and put right in front of us so we don't even have to look it's right here the things that are terrifying are just things that need to be finally resolved. The things, the secrets that we've been keeping are right in front of us. And it's time to 
deal with them, make peace with them, balance them, decide that you are too important and too unique to be in the middle and be normal, even though you never feel normal and you don't really relate to anybody else, but you're kind of in the middle between extreme, extreme expression and nothingness, right? You are all that is, and you actually can create from all of it. So hopefully you guys will join us. We're starting December 23rd. Um, it's super cheap because I want everyone to be able to do it. So I mean, love is the most important building block. It's our only ammunition about the dark, through the dark, right? Love, real love, not pain love. And we're going to take us all the way into Valentine's Day. Kind of good energy moving in. Take us through our birthing experience of this December energy. And we'll work together in, in, in all the different aspects of what we're going to be going through to find these kind of shattered, broken, buried pieces and bring them to the threshold so that inner child may begin to manifest your reality. Because as long as ego is doing it, it's going to be like this, mm, right? Eh, weak sauce. We don't want that. We want extraordinary. We want superheroes. Why do you think kids are obsessed with superheroes? Because that's what they know they are. And the human body has coordinates to turn those powers on. Multi-dimensional suit you're wearing, guys. 12 strands of DNA, you know, and um, you think you have spiritual gifts now? wait until the inner child is driving this vehicle and not the ego, All right? It becomes amazing. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you got a little nugget somewhere. Um, I hope that you are making peace with where you are, accepting where you are, sitting in where you are, being with what you are and navigating through that, whether you do that with me, someone else, you know, the, the more that we all do this, the faster that the fit the things outside of us will change, which means if we don't like what we're seeing, there's still something to change within. Because what you'll notice is you may not still be in love with what's happening outside, but you'll be very neutral about it. And you'll know that you're in love with your life. You might not be in love with the life that's happening over there, but you're in love with your life. And very soon that bubble of energy grows and grows and grows and percolates because we're all connected and your reality starts to become a collective reality just by you holding space for what you desire and what you take action on and what you give your energy to because you are creating your own reality still that's not going to change. You're just going to get better at it. You're going to get more fluid at it. You're going to start manifesting things you want, not 10 steps forward, 10 steps back. And this is really going to be our year, you guys. I know it doesn't seem like it, but every opportunity is laid out for you. The new roads are built. The new timelines are being installed. And guess what they're being installed from? Ask and it's given. So what you've asked for is in existence but you know, sometimes you wanna go down that road you've gone because that's what road you know. And as long as we do that, right? We're not really going to live our highest potential. And maybe some of your potential is just literally living your best life in your own space, doing what you love to do every day and not helping a gosh darn person. But you don't have to help anybody to create major change on the planet because your field of potential if you're the, like living your best life and, and your best life is, you know, get up and work out and go hiking and make amazing food and, you know, have great friends and, and that's it. If you are literally living your best life, you're putting that into the collective. And now someone's going to be like, oh, I could live my best life because it's telepathic. Right. So what you are. Right. It exudes out of you. Just like as if you're walking down the street and someone's smoking a cigarette, like you're not a smoker, they're smoking. You're not in their reality, but guess what? You walk in through their smoke, you're in their reality. <laughs> Choking. So you guys have to understand how influential people's fields are. And if you are not managing your own field, you'll walk right into it and possibly get a headache, possibly feel bad, possibly feel... Unease. So when we 
watch the news or get on these, you know, forums and start talking. We're literally walking into that cigarette smoke where we have now not a choice of how we feel. We feel icky because of what we just walked into. So that is your personal responsibility to have your eyes on your own paper and navigate your field of potential based in your desire. And the more that it can come from your desire and less from what you're avoiding, the faster your reality will manifest. All right. So super exciting times. I could not be more excited of what's happening, you know, and, and really, you know, really kind of getting kind of crushing that pride a little bit and, and digging into the parts of ourselves that, you know, maybe that have been our good points. You know, a lot of times we, what we think is a good point may have been disguised as something that we're avoiding. Right. I mean, I wouldn't even be in this work. I wouldn't even be teaching all over the world if I hadn't been excruciating pain of needing help myself, not finding anybody to help me. So I'm doing it myself and then I'm going to show other people how to do this faster. Right. It all came from a pain program. So every negative is a shortcut, but it's a building block to our greatest potential, which is our self-awareness. That is your true wealth. So I will see you guys in the workshop or I'll see you in the classroom. Or I'll see you wherever I see you. I cannot you know, extend my gratitude enough for those of you who are doing the work and, and, and really playing in the field and really having fun. And then maybe you're not having a lot of fun yet, but you will, because what's on the other side of all of that confusion is understanding, right? And we turn knowledge into wisdom when we walk through the fire. So that's where we are. Might, you know, hurt a little bit, but growing pains, birthing, you are in the perfect place for your personal expansion right now, regardless of what reality you're in. Okay. All right. So I'll see you guys very soon. Love you all. Website is jessicaalstrom.com. Workshop name is Master of Love. Starts December 23rd.